Hello and welcome to another episode of Laptop Retrospective and today we have finally returned with the eGPU setup. I know that many of you have been waiting a very long time to see the next episode of this and today we will be attempting to get the X220 to run with the eGPU under Windows 10. If you haven't seen the previous videos in the series, I'll leave a link in the top right hand corner for you but it essentially involves this particular piece of kit right here, which is the Beast version 8.5C, and it will be sending that signal over the express card port. Very quickly, I will show you all of the pieces that will be used in this build today. So the first, obviously, is the eGPU itself, the express card adapter. We have a GTX 950 here. And then I have a power supply from an old computer just off the screen with all of the cable accoutrement that we need to actually power this thing up. The very first thing that we obviously need to do is make sure that the eGPU itself does indeed have power. So we're going to go ahead and plug that in. And this uses the 20 pin from the motherboard and then one of the connectors. Now that we have that all taken care of, we would take the HDMI plug, which isn't actually HDMI, it's using that uh, cable to connect this guy. So please, whatever you do, don't actually plug in a monitor there. That will probably end poorly. And then we're going to go ahead and slide that sucker into the slot there for the express card. And then the only other thing that we need to do for this setup, of course, is install the GPU and make sure that it is getting power. So we just take the GPU, simple as that and we are going to go ahead and drop it on to the eGPU itself. And then we are going to uh, adapt these two Molex connectors to the PCIe that we need to actually power the card and plug that in on the top. Essentially, that is all ready to go. Now, I have not tried this on Windows 10 yet, so we will see how well this goes. I will turn on the power supply and we'll go ahead and open up the X220. And when we power it on, we should know it's working because we will see fan spin. And I'm going to tell it to launch Windows 10 up here in my bootloader. All right, so at this time it is only reading the HD 3000 graphics. All right, so this is the moment of truth. If it doesn't find it anywhere, then it probably won't allow the drivers to install. And that means troubleshooting. My favorite. Yeah, so it lists three errors, but we know that this bottom one is probably it and that it couldn't find the compatible hardware. So, yeah, troubleshooting begins. So here's the trick, and it's silly. You do need a monitor connected uh, when this thing boots up in Windows 10, apparently, for it to detect the uh, EG. So it must just be a quirk with Windows 10. I'm also reading that it was a quirk of Windows 8 as well, but we are making progress that it is detecting a basic display adapter. And at this point, we should be able to load NVIDIA drivers to it. So this is interesting. Now it's just complaining that other installers are running, but everything else seems to be fine. All the, the other errors have cleared. So what I'm going to attempt to do is I'm gonna go back into device manager here once it wakes back up and I'm going to see if I can just get Windows to install the correct driver for it. It has successfully installed the drivers and of course it will not work until we restart the computer so we may as well get on with that show. All right so this is exciting. If I pan over here I've got the Lapau portable monitor set up and I have things on it. It looks like it is extending the display so that is super exciting. It does look like it is working as intended. So that means that we do have a potentially successful eGPU setup. And now we have to do a little bit of benchmarking, I suppose. Okay, so this is pretty important. So on Tomb Raider, I can play it on this display here, but that'll only use the Intel HD Graphics 3000, or I can play it on this display over here and actually use the GTX 950. So we're gonna go ahead and tap that, and we're gonna leave everything else the way that it is. All right, so I'm using the keyboard over here. All 
and we'll go ahead and start the benchmark. And I am just constantly reminded how bad a X220TN panel is, especially even when looking at this. Uh, it's just so clean. So this first part of the demo always goes well because you don't see the C and everything. And then it normally goes chugga 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 chugga. I'm gonna have to actually go back and look to see if there are any performance differences between Linux Windows 7 and Windows 10, because I believe I've used the same card for all three. So that'll mean a pretty consistent uh, benchmark if there's any difference between those operating systems. I have to say that this is still looking relatively smooth. I'm gonna guess that we're probably getting at least a, a constant 30 frames a second. but it seems pretty respectable. Like you could definitely play the game and enjoy it with this. Yeah, that was, that was pretty close. So it, maximum FPS was about, was 50 dead and minimum was 24.4 with an average of 33.3. .3. So that's not too shabby. I mean, if you're looking to play games on a budget, then uh, this still remains supreme. All right, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for waiting as long as it did to produce an eGPU video for Windows 10. As you can see, these setups do take a bit of time to put all together and then troubleshoot and then film, uh, which is the primary reason it took so long. If you do have any questions, feel free to put them in the comments down below, but I would also encourage you to uh, head to certain forums like eGPU.io, where a lot of this information ends up coming from anyway. And if you are wondering what combination of graphics card to use with your laptop, I would strongly suggest that you start using bottleneck calculators just so you can start to set your expectations accordingly because there is a limit on how much uh, GPU your CPU can actually handle and process at the same time. At any rate, if you enjoy this sort of content and would like to see more, I'll encourage you to do the big four. Please like the video, share, subscribe, and hit that notification bell so the next time I feature some quirky eGPU nonsense, you'll be the first to know about it. Thank you so much, and I will see you next time.